Hello and welcome to a 3v3 cast. Starting off at the top side of the map, we have Colette playing as the Warlock with the Sanheim Elite mod Color Scheme. In mid, we have Brat Jonita playing as the Apothecary using the Black Templar skin, I believe. And at the bottom, we have DOJ Huey playing as the Farseer. For the red side, in the bottom side, we have yeah, a page of toilet paper playing as the Apothecary, also known as a page of Abnormal Tactics, or just your page for short, I guess. And in mid we have Maritex playing as the Inquisitor with the Steel Legion Armageddon colour scheme, I think. And at the top side we have Ving Hao playing as the Orc Warboss. Meanwhile in top, some guardsmen already top as well to support this war boss and a multi last turret is getting placed down here as well. At the bottom side some scouts are going to be fighting some Dire Avengers, a couple of Dire Avenger models here on the left hand side, not behind any cover, will get picked off by these scout models and scouts are already receiving one heal from the APO already. The APO comes in a bit closer as well for that healing bonus as well to take effect the extra health regeneration when the APO is nearby. Meanwhile, at top already, some doubling going on, but some doubling about to happen in the bottom side of the map as the APO and some tactical marines decide to move in here against Paige. Paige going to be unable to hold here against two armies himself, will be forced off. Oh, well, the same story up top here for Colette is going to be true as well. But the Banshee is already rushing for that aspect of fleetness here. Very effective against power armor and very effective against heavy infantry in general. Very good income tier 2. Once you actually get the Exarch, you actually get an Exarch armed with two power swords who is very effective against the heavy infantry, more so compared to the heavy melee Exarch from the aspects of strength. Grenade is going to get thrown down up in the top lane here, but it's actually going to miss and you can catch out the wall, but it's ever so slightly. It's going to be full retreats here for Colette. She's unable to hold against two players, while the same is going to be true here for a page of abnormal tactics, while the Banshees try to chase away the units. Power node is going to get bashed. Meanwhile, top, I imagine this generator farm here for blue team will also get bashed. Generator is also placed in mid as well, very curious. But some bigger losses here though. For blue team, I would imagine if they actually do lose this generator farm compared to only red team who lose a power node and will lose a second power node by the looks of it if Paige does not get there quick enough. But the Warbus and Slug is going to be melee down, the double shoot is going to be out, putting a lot of damage. Meanwhile, mid Maritex is also going to be taking down this center generator farm as well. Did actually have a generator added to it. I'm not sure if it got cancelled mid-production or if it's actually just been killed. The Inquisitor will also be able to finish off this one power node here as well. And blue team going to be lacking on power. In comparison to red team who have actually placed down a full generator farm, placed down generators bottom. Meanwhile, blue team just stuck to this single generator farm down bottom. In fact, Jonita placing down a lot of generators actually for his team. But meanwhile, at the bottom, Paige loving the double fully upgraded scouts will continue to fully upgrade them with the elite training sergeants and shotguns on both squads he does actually do that quite often but the scouts going to be coming in here shotgun blast onto the banshees meanwhile maritex coming in from behind the apo is in the area but only armed with tactical marines and the apo himself scouts going to be forced off here for the doom on the fast here plus taking too much damage batch is going to be jumping in onto the apo here or onto the scouts apo is going to be going down here taking so much damage and the banshees will be able to finish him off and the sink kill is going to happen tactical marines are now going to be the next target here meanwhile in mid the apo is going to get forced off tactical marines trying to chase and scouts upgrading with sergeant here could see a grenade get thrown now but the grenade has already been used because the energy has already been depleted on those scouts and tactical marines are down two models escaping away with one models fully upgraded scouts still in the engagement here but two dire avengers and a fast here can make it very difficult for them to actually win that engagement but a grenade will go down will hit those dire avengers square on but they will be able to live overall and now maritex coming into this engagement hua is going to be forced off here in the end and decides to just fully retreat Meanwhile, in the top side of the map, Banshees gain suppressed here. Looters are set up, preventing Dire Avengers from being able to go forward any further behind this green cover. And Shooters should be able to win this engagement, actually, against these Dire Avengers in range. Although Looters recess now, Banshees might have a slight opportunity to flank these Looters as they do not actually cover the entire top side. And Banshees look like they're actually going to go in for that flank right now. But Dire Avengers taking so much range fire. Shooters down to just 8 HP will be going down to a Warlock from that Dire Avenger squad. And the loot is going to get forced off the distort field used onto the banshees as well to reduce incoming range damage too. 
in mid. Meanwhile, Maritex actually placing down a generator farm and is on his way towards top the Dire Avengers and Banshees that are remaining top. Definitely will not be able to hold against the entire army of Mario as he decides to make his way towards the top side. And with these Flamer Guardsmen as well, could actually see a power bash. But at the same time, Janita is also here to actually defend the top side. Banshees retreating away. Dire Avengers gets to remain on the field. The Apo is here and an energy shield is going to get placed down. The Inquisitor with the Holy Braze will just force melee on that Dire Avengers squad who's trying to hide behind an energy shield. Tactical Marines now jumping into the fire grenade, going to get thrown down, going to hit that Inquisitor and going to knock her over and allow the scouts and tacks to actually get some damage onto her as well. Meanwhile, at the bottom side, the Apo again knocks over by the Kinetic Pulse, is alone right now and will retreat away from this engagement here as Huey does push in, but at the same time, Paige is going to be pushing him himself in towards mid, but at top is going to be a double here. The Orcs and the IG are going to be pairing together to actually take on the Apo and Colette together. Apo seen behind out of cover here, looters are now set up in Immolator here is going to be pretty painful as both red team teammates are grouped up fairly heavily those looters are getting burned by that immolator but seems to be able to tank it just fine for now down to just 400 hp scouts going to be leading the charge in the war boss even upgraded with the custom shooter as well so commanders will need to be careful the apo in particular the warlock will also need to be careful since he does not have the champion's robes will need the champion's robes if he wants to prevent himself from getting knocked back although the war boss does not seem to be using the custom shooter's ability in fact scout sluggers might go down here in this engagement but we'll be able to walk away with just 26 HP. The Banshee's going to be fleeting in, but the Banshees are so low and losing models left and right there. There's the custom shoots getting used onto the Banshees, but the Banshees retreated away. Do not get knocked over by that custom shooter. Custom shoots also increasing melee DPS as well by 5, which isn't too much as well. But the range damage increase going from 10 to 33.3 33 is insane. And the Inquisitor is going to be going down here. She walks up to a guy who seen the war boss, unable to get res onto her without taking so much damage. Hard boys could get used here, but. He is now too low to actually get a res. Scouts try to throw a grenade but actually fail in doing so. And meanwhile in the bottom side, things are getting decapped and things are getting captured here by Huey. And Paige is unable to actually hold his power. He's actually gone through. Unable to actually push through mid, sorry. So he's actually captured the natural VP there of blue side. And is actually making his way down to the bottom side. One scout squad forced off already. A second scout squad is down here. You can see that webway gate is up for Huey. But these scouts are taking so much damage here. Do you need to be careful of a retreat grenade? But they might actually end up taking the plasma grenade. Does get thrown down. A plasma grenade is still available though for these Dire Avengers by the looks of it with the NG. But the scouts will be able to get away overall. And a wow, a purification rights grenade is going to go off. It's going to hit both of these Dire Avenger scores. And the Apo is trying to chase down with that Sanguine Chainsword. Will not be able to get a melee hit, but might be able to, wow, will be able to pop off a model though with his bolt pistol. And that Apo could actually win an engagement against Farsi. He does actually have enough health. Does use the heal on himself as well, but that Sanguine Chainsword is going to give him an extra 25 HP per swing as well. The grenade going to get thrown onto the looters here, going to be losing two models. Another multi last turret is going to be going up here, but the immolator on the warlock will easily be able to take it down. ASM is going to be leading the engagement here. Looters going to get forced off. The sentinel has stump available, but is not using it. The apo is charging in here. Stump is going to get used, going to catch out the entire ASM squad, including the sergeant. The guiding weapons team is just moving in for a flank against the turret, and the inquisitor is going to be taking some damage here, getting knocked over there by that apo. The apo unupgraded though for a blue team. And ASM going to be jumping in once again, might be regressing this though as fully upgraded sluggers are in the area along with some Ogrens about to jump into the fight. The Ogrens will not be able to kill the Apo or might be able to kill the Apo if they decide to actually charge in here. But might be switching over to these tactical marines with a sergeant leading them instead. And looks like Colette is also going to get forced off from the top side of this little lane. Warlock's still in the area. Guiding weapons team so low. Custom shooter is actually getting used and it will be enough to actually take it down. Did have 20 HP in that war boss. The custom shooter just doing a lot of range damage though with that upgrade and Warlock is going to leap in there to knock over the Ogrens. But the Warlock is not going to be able to win against this army alone. Decides to immolate some ground there but the Sluggers are going to be able to ignore it for the most part. And the Warlock is going to be forced off here. Dire Avenger still in the area though. The Ogrens will be able to just ignore him and carry on pushing. Meanwhile, Boston QA making sure that bottom side does not actually have any power whatsoever here for red team. But the VPs are getting extremely low here for the blue side. 154 VPs to 496 now. Things are looking a little bit grim. And red team also having a generator farm in mid, still having that massive generator, um, having that massive power income over the blue side as well. 
and other aspects. Um, another fleet of foot Banshee Squad benefit is the fact that you can actually jump over terrain, you can actually see them leaping over some terrain. Looks a bit odd sometimes, especially when all the terrain is bunched up, you can see them jumping multiple times over the same spot. And Claire also going for the aspects of fleetness as well, rather than the aspects of strength which you so commonly see. But Ogren's going to be jumping into Moore's mid band. She's going to get forced off. Meanwhile, the armies are just making their way for this VP. Red team already having that top side VP. Now making their side, now making their way down to this center. Natural VP here for blue team. ASM going to be jumping in here. These sluggers with hard boys on them going to be jumping onto the shooters. The sluggers going to try and chase them down. And the ASM are going to be struggling to win this fight. Now use your choppers even used onto the ASM. A heal really needs to go down. Doom onto the Ogren's. But I think actually focusing down the Ogren's anyway. ASM going to get forced away, Dire Avengers taking a lot of damage, of Warboss just in the center here, going to be a massive pain, Ogren is forced off extremely early, Banshee's coming in for a flank as well against these stick bombers, the Orcs have now been forced off completely, Claire going to be pushing through, meanwhile Banshee's and the Farseer here going to be pushing in against these Guardsmen, Guardsmen getting hit quite hard there, but the Farseer going to get forced off by that Farseer with the Hammer of the Witches from the Inquisitor, and now the Guardsmen will be forced off as Claire is able to now come towards mid, no Ethereal Slash available for cool for retreats killing since it was on cooldown, but that guardsman sergeant down to just 15 HP, so low but nothing. In fact, the badges will actually be able to kill him, I didn't even think that they would. And now this generator farm is ripe for the taking there for blue team. Blue team still pushing in through that bottom side as well, gonna get a decap and even capture the requisition point. Meanwhile, top Colette is gonna capture that top side of the map to stop the VP bleed and in fact inflict the VP bleed against red team. 93 VPs to 493. Red team on 400 extra VPs here. It's going to be very difficult for blue team to actually make a comeback here, but you can see on the minimap right now they're gaining so much map control every second right now, and red team are grouped up as a triple almost and might even push through mid as a triple to try and force a blue team off to try and end the game. Tactical Marines here behind some green cover though to the models not behind green cover. We need to be careful here but the Dreadnought is definitely going to be scary here. The Warboss upgrading to the Power Claw will be a lot of heavy melee for this Dreadnought to deal with but does actually have a melee resistance with its default claw weapon. ASM in the area, the Cyborg implants is here. Going to be stunning the ASM and the APO. ASM going to be lacking a single model. In fact, they won't be able to attack a school until that one model does jump in. All are doing an extremely odd leap trajectory there. ASM gain entangled there by the Interrogator's armor. The Warlock is also struggling there, not the Interrogator's armor, I mean the Excruciator's. Warlock is going to get forced off, the ASM gain very low. Banshee's jumping in, a Psychic Storm onto the entire army. Stick Bombers might go down here, the Dreadnought might be able to finish him off. ASM going to be jumping out of the combat, the Dreadnought is still going to be chasing in, but Page is now joining the fight. Angels of Death has now run out, Banshee's fleeting down from the top side of the map. Grenades getting thrown there from Page. The APO will be able to poison the area. Scouts taking a lot of damage though, and Scouts nearly running into that own poison as well. Meanwhile, Doom onto Tactical Marines. P Dev shot is not going to go for those P Devs, going to go for the Scouts instead. If that hit the P if that hit the Tactical Marines instead, that would be a very dead squad. Scouts running away. Dreadnought is still pushing in. Blue team able to hold their area. We need to reclaim the VP. Banch is going to get forced off that. Dreadnought might be pushed in a little bit too far. There might be some AV already. In fact, there's a heavy weapons team upgrading to Alaska, and this Dreadnought really needs to just pull back and fall back with the rest of Blue team for now. But the Dreadnought going to be fighting the Inquisitor here. Ogren's going to be tying that up. Last Cannon now set up, does have plenty of vision of it. And the Warboss is coming in with his Power Claw as well. This Dreadnought is going to be taking so much damage. Needs to walk quite far away from the Ark. The Kinetic Pulse from QA is going to be knocking back all those melee models to try and prevent the Dreadnought from getting hit. Dreadnought is going to be able to get away potentially. If it has Emperor's Fist available, it will most definitely get away. Scouts trying to chase as well. Shooters trying to chase as well. There's just so much to try and chase it. Farseer doesn't actually have the Armor of Fortune, if you, you can actually use the Armor of Fortune on Dreadnought as far as I'm aware. But P-Dev Shot might be doing friendly fire damage here, but might also knock off at any weight units. Dreadnought is down to just 10 HP, Psychic Storm is slowing down all these melee units. This is an incredible Psychic Storm, which has managed to shut down a lot of units here, but the Dreadnought is going to go down in the end. The Ogrens were able to chase up and take it down. Meanwhile, Blue Team has been able to push through at the top side of the map, taking down the power. Warlock is also here, armed with that Witchblade of Kernis. Did have the Immolator earlier, but the Blue team do need to be careful now as red team starts to make their way towards the top side and are starting to cap their natural vp as well and blue team not on that many vps at 93 compared to red team who are on 278 here the war boss and some sluggers on the retreat path of these double dire avengers do need to be careful to have a webway gate that they can fleet towards grenades gonna get thrown down going to be knocking over that war boss with hard boys doesn't actually care too much and dire avengers going to be entering 
that gate and the gate will now get taken down but the warlock also needs to be careful here going to be retreating away from that inquisitor hammer the witches and a couple of attacks of that holy brazer would finish him off in my bomb angels of death getting used here for a page that damage reduction coming in handy when trying to run up to a guarded weapon team like this but banshee's coming in here as well more banshee's coming in for collects as well Banshee is going to be retreating there for QA, but collects Banshee still in the engagement. Plasma Grenade does get thrown down onto the scouts, but not doing too much damage. But some more Dire Avengers is going to be coming out here this time for Colette. And Colette will be able to force Page off at the bottom side here. The Librarian is also in the area. Dire Avengers is going to enter that gate to actually get away from the poison of that Blight. I'm not Blight Grenade, from that Purification vial. Meanwhile, up top, Sluggers fighting the APO, and that APO will most likely go down here. The ASMs getting excruciated there by the Inquisitor, unable to actually fight these Sluggers properly. Sluggers try to chase down these Scouts instead, and Sluggers will get forced off here. The APO healers on cooldown, but that Inquisitor with the Holy Razor is just doing a lot of damage here, but down to just 270 HP. Might be able to actually get a kill on here, or at least a force her off, but don't want to bleed any ASM models at the same time by the looks of it. And Colette and Huey are going to be pushing together here at the bottom with the Farsia and Banshees, but Scouts coming in here to actually try and defend this power farm just down to just the power node now scouts could throw some retreat grenades but I think the retreat grenades might be on cooldown here and the banshees are spread quite far apart and in fact actually able to jump over this wall as well so that makes it very difficult to land a retreat grenade on those banshees with the aspects of fleetness but Doom has been used, the Veil of Time getting used onto the Apo as well, giving them some insane movement speed right now. And another Dreadnought has been purchased here for Janita, and this time it's armed with an Assault Cannon as well. Meanwhile, in mid, Banshees are actually going to reclaim this power farm away from Red Team, going to take it for themselves instead. But the Ogre is coming in here, this Dreadnought really needs to be careful, getting tied up there by the last cannon as well from the IG Heavy Weapons Team. And Heavy Weapons Team Arc is still getting some more shots onto this Dreadnought. Dreadnought is going to go down here, the ASM are trying to jump in there. And the Witchblade Kernus is getting used here. Distortion Cannon has fired a Singularity as well. It's going to catch out quite a bit of the army here. The Orc army is just going to get insanely coarse out here. The Shooter Boys and Stick Bombers down extremely low, but the Ogre is able to pursue even further forward down to just the Warlock at the top side of the map right now. By the looks of it, meanwhile, the bottom side, Page, is trying to push through. There is a Falcon here for QA. I'm not sure if that Falcon can kite enough. The Ogre is going to be taking this webway gate down, but Seer Count is going to be leaping in here for Colette. And Colette will be able to force away this Ogre and Stormtroop is even called in here on the back lines by the looks of things. We'll get forced off as well. Meanwhile, Page looks like he is able to actually push in through here, but I felt with the energy shield going to be extremely tanky. Very annoying though for Page to deal with when it's got this energy shield. And Page not actually having much AV himself, not having any AV himself. In fact, he does have a missile launcher on his tactical marines, but that's not going to be enough for a Falcon with an energy shield in tier 3. Warlock here might, wow, will go down that war boss with the power claw already hitting hard. They're going to be able to take down that Warlock. Only had 800 HP. It was down to about a quarter health for that power claw doing about 190 damage per swing, I believe. And it is increased even further by the fact that the war boss is also level 4. But Missile Launch Tactical Marines are focusing down ranges instead of the Falcon itself. The Falcon will be able to remain on the field. The Librarian is going to get forced off. Did have Veil of Time on himself, but now the Doom is going to make it very scary for the Librarian and he will be running away. This power farm is hotly contested in mid though for between both teams. Neither team wanting to destroy the power farm, but neither team wanting or able to actually capture it for themselves. But Banshee Exarch therefore Colette is going to be going down and Ving Hao is only to be able to actually capture this mid generator farm but the orcs will need to be careful as ASM and Colette is coming in Janita is moving in with his army and ASMs do need to be careful jumping in here stick bombers and sluggers will be able to actually fight these ASMs without support but the stick bombers are running away the slugs are alone shooters have retreated away in the second squad of shooters is trying to focus them down the apo asm is going to be a bit too much and slugs are going to get forced off a second set of asm here as well upgraded with the sergeant is going to be coming into the area meanwhile seer counts is going to be jumping in here onto the guardsmen ogrens do need to be careful the seer counts will really destroy these ogrens ogrens with their super heavy infantry very effective against range squads but not so effective against a dedicated melee superiority squad like a seer council and retreat grenades look like they might be available here for Colette. These Ogrens are most definitely going to be going down. Grenades are going to get thrown onto the guardsmen since the Ogrens have now been wiped just by sheer damage here from the Seer Council and that Warlock. And now the Inquisitor is going to be the next target. The Inquisitorial Mandate giving her 7 seconds of invulnerability and extra movement speed. Warlock might go down here. will be getting taken down there by that Holy Brazer and the ASM here for... Janisa is going to be coming in here onto that heavy weapons team. Meanwhile, Seer Council is still destroying everything. And that Inquisitor down to just 44 HP 
will most definitely be going down here to these ASM bolt pistols. It should be enough to actually take her down, and she will be going down to bolt pistols and the help of the stern guards with those cracking rounds. Meanwhile, in mid, QA is trying to push in here, but the orc army and page is going to be a little bit too much. Falcon with that energy shield still active, but still level one, still hasn't actually been able to level up just yet. And the power up top is going to get captured there for blue team. While blue team also trying to capture this mid power farm, which is still neutral after all this time as well. And Scout's going to be coming down here for Janita, armed with a sniper rifle, but might be a bit overwhelmed alone here. Grenade's going to get thrown down. Also, Webway Gate here. Two grenades able to take down that Webway Gate fairly easily, but I would rather use the grenades in the actual combat. The Double Scout's going to be making their way towards the top side, blue side have now actually captured top and down to just 58 VPs, red team on 250 though. And Banch is going to get four stuff there for Huey. Meanwhile, the Librarian Apo combination with the double upgraded Scouts is quite a scary army, but a very micro intensive army at the same time. Meanwhile, the Orcs going to be deciding to make their way towards top. Janita is going to be backing away there. Colette was in the area, but Deciding not to engage here, the Singularity might go off here from the D cannon. D cannon though is going to get forced off as soon as it casts that Singularity, so it won't go off. But the Orc army from Ving Hao is going to get scared off anyways. And the Apo is going to be using his heal as much as he can, but the Apo not having the improved medical equipment will be very limited on how much he can use his heal. But the Avatar is now here for Huey, going to be leading the charge here, going to be the line breaker. And the Devastator is not focusing down that Avatar, going to allow the Avatar to get in even closer, even quicker. Falcon driving in very aggressively, Maritex is now coming down here as well. In fact, there's all three players, or in fact the Orcs are missing here for Ving Hao. Ving Hao is pushing through top, but there's still Maritex and Paige here. Wailing Doom is available for this avatar, and I think the Guardsmen are trying to run away to make sure they don't get hit by that as well. And the Veil of Time is actually getting used onto the Guardsmen here, which is a bit curious. <laughs> The Tactical Marines in the area that Avatar has taken a lot of damage from the IG Heavy Weapons team. The Devastator the Last Cannon has also been able to set up and missile launch Tactical Marines. It is going to be enough to force off that Avatar. Meanwhile, in top, Colette is getting forced off here by the looks of it from the Nob Squad and the War Boss. I'm surprised Nobs were actually purchased here for being how given that Seer Council was already on the field. And I think the Apo took more damage from that friendly grenade than anything else. But the Apo just healed himself up. Looked like he healed himself up twice there, and I think he actually did. I'm not too sure about that. But some ASMs have been now upgraded to Vanguard Veterans, and they will definitely be a lot stronger now in Tier 3. Vanguard Veterans being a power melee squad, having much more damage compared to their ASM counterpart, having more health, a health regen, and their abilities being slightly cheaper, I believe, or about the same cast, I'm not too sure about that. But Wailing Doom goes to go off here, Maritex might lose the guards for the squad if he's not careful, down to just 80 HP, Rangers taking some shots, this generator farm still not under anyone's control, and blue team down to 19 VPs as well, red team on 229, Inquisitorial Mandate up top, but the Inquisitorial Mandate does not stop that Inquisitor from getting knocked over, and the red rocket run is going to go down here as well. Going to be catching out the army of Janisa, but Angel's death going to prevent any further knockback from that second rocket run, and he will just be able to retreat out of there. Meanwhile, mid Angel's death getting used here for Page and Eldritch Storm is about to go down. Not going to catch out too much. Veil of time on these devastators, removing the tear down time and setup time. Going to be able to continue firing away at that avatar. And the double shotgun scout is not the most effective against the super heavy infantry of that avatar. But at the same time, Ving Hao forced off. Avatar still trying to push in. Devastator now forced off. Psychic storm in the area. And the Apo is also going to be a forced off. The librarian trying to do what he can, but the librarian needs to be careful. Banshee's jumping in onto him. Scouts also need to be careful as well. Heavy weapon team getting tied up there by that Doombringer fast here as well. Doom getting used onto these scouts as well. The avatar can Continuing to push in forward here, Wailing Doom once again. Can be catching out some Guardsmen if not careful. Only catching out that one Guardsman model. Banshee is going to force off those scouts in the end, but the Orc army is now here. The Avatar forced to retreat away. Falcon in the area, Nobs and Warbots going to be very scary for that Avatar to actually deal with. Meanwhile, Colette pushing in through top. Seer Council is going to be tearing down that generator farm. Blue team in control of this mid generator farm as of now. Apo going to get repurchased there as well. Could have been repurchased with the. Laramie's Blessing, but the war boss going to be missing out on that XP from not getting a res there, and the Fire Prism now coming out for Huey. Falcon still in the area, allowing Blue Team to actually reinforce on the field as well, and Colette might be falling back and pushing through mid instead, but Inquisitor is coming in here with a Heavy Weapons Team, but the Heavy Weapons Team and Inquisitor will be easily forced off here by D-Cannon, or even by the Howling Banshees and Seer Council, but Singularity is going to be going down top, meanwhile Red Team pushing in through mid here, Banshee is going to be coming in here, Hollow Field is activated in the area, Cyborg Bits, 
are going to be knocking back these Banshees quite far as well and stunning them so they're going to be out of combat so they should retreat away and are retreating away but the Banshees are going to be going down but the ASM are coming in where are the Vanguard veterans though APO is trying to fight here against some knobs and the warbots with the APO. Not getting focused on whatsoever. Stick Bomb is going to try and throw some Stick Bombers, but it's going to miss. And Vanguard is going to be jumping in, supported by two ASM squads as well. The Vanguard is not even jumping in themselves, but the ASM is taking a lot of damage here from these Sluggers. It's going to be engaging these Sluggers here to help out the friendly ASM, but the ASM have already gone down. Colette now coming in with Seer Council Banshees, but they're taking so much damage from the double suppression from the shooters here and knobs as well on their tail. And Vanguard is going to be jumping away to safety. Another psychic storm is going to go down here from the fast. They're going to be forcing off part of the Orc army here, but the knobs are going to be tearing down the Seer Council Banshees, nearly going down in that engagement. Librarian is pushing in very far here for Page, but is going to be going down overall, taking so much damage there. That Doombringer guide combination. In fact, he's going to be able to walk away to safety. Destructor going down on that Warlock. And Warlock, I need to actually finish him off another Ethereal Slash, this Warlock with the Providence Armor, invulnerable to all sorts of damage, but is definitely weak to knockback. The Warlock's Providence has now run out, and Avatar is now here, for this time it is Colette's Avatar, where's the Avatar though? For Huey, Huey's Avatar is back at base apparently, and is only making its way towards the engagement now, was healing up after taking a lot of damage from the previous engagement, Nobs trying to tear down this Avatar will get forced off the Fire Prison, with his constant knockback is going to be too annoying, and this time Huey's Avatar now coming in, and Blue Team still in control of that top side of the map, down to 110 VPs now, Red Team, and Paige is coming in here, Guided Weapons Team is trying to defend this VP, but will get caught out as Paige is able to sneak in here with his scouts. Was that a shotgun blast used? Fire Prism is going to make sure these scouts don't even get the decap at the very least. And scouts will be forced to retreat here through the army of Blue Team. And the Avatar might be enough to actually take down a scout model. In fact, the Avatar, too slow there, will not be able to do it. anything. D Cannon is going to be firing away here at these guardsmen. Grenade is available for these Dire Avengers as well. At the same time, Grenade could get thrown down as scouts are still trying to run away. Going to be retreating away instead. D Cannon is going to be firing away at those guardsmen. And Vanguard Veteran is going to be helping that D Cannon to finish off that guardsman squad as well. Unable to actually get decap onto that top side VP, the Distortion Cannon. Should now start firing away at this heavy weapons team if it can, but the Vanguard's going to be jumping in. Heavy weapons team trying to tear down, but we'll be losing some models in the process here. Meanwhile, mid looks like Red Team might be grouping up for another push together. Janita down to just stand guards and Vanguard's Maritex down to just two heavy weapons team decides to cancel and decides to get some stormtroopers instead. Cancel the Lehman Rust for Stormtroopers, the Avatar is going to be, or something else will be able to take down the Apo there, Wailing Doom with a, with Doom actually casted on him as well, it's just going to be a bit too much. But the Avatar though, needs to be careful, another Wailing Doom, that's going down with a Warp Throw, at the same time slightly off par there, otherwise that would have been an amazing combination though. But the Avatar though, going to be tearing down this. Plasma Devastator Squad Distortion Cannons are firing away as well and are doing quite a bit of damage here. It's Red Team Librarian is still in the area, nearly level 3 as well, but does need to be careful when fighting this Avatar. This Avatar does 240 damage per swing of that sword. Uh, some scouts getting extremely caught out there. They run up to the face of a Seer Council. Seer Council though, level 3 Psychic Storm is going down onto the area as well with the Seer Council. Wailing Doom as well, wow, there's just models getting flown everywhere. Banshee's going to get forced off, Seer Council still in the fight here for Colette's though. Red Team down to just 32 VPs and Blue Team could actually get a decap onto this VP as well. The Librarian with Doom cast on him getting knocks aside there by the Wailing Doom as well. Stormtroopers look like they went down there for Maritech still has a second set of Stormtroopers that have just come out of base right now. But the Seer Council is going to be jumping onto them, there's also a Singularity about to go down, it's going to be catching out those friendly Seer Council members as well. Might even knock them a bit closer to this PDF squad, but that's going to be a dead stick bomber squad here as well for Vinghao. And PDF's going to be really caught out here. Red, blue team able to actually get a decap here, and red team down to just no VPs. Blue team able to actually make the comeback after being 400 VPs down, I think, at one point. The VPs were 493 to 93 at one point, and blue team able to actually make the comeback here and win the game.